Hello everyone, uh, welcome to 11th episode of Fundamentals of Research in Medicine with Professor Fikri Abuzidan. Today we will talk about uh, how to analyze our data. So, I welcome Prof again. Uh, we want to listen to you about the, how we can analyze our data. Thank you very it. much, Arif. I think my story of the statistics is very funny actually, and uh, people get surprised. They think I'm actually a statistician, not a surgeon. And this, why did, I mean, I, I advise the students actually to understand, I don't say to be like a statistician, but to understand what are they doing. And usually, you notice with me, if I do an analysis, usually I bring the, per, the person who's doing the study beside me and I tell him, why do I do that? Why do I select that? Why I don't do that? And the story is that in, when I was in Sweden, we had a, a very interesting data from Kuwait, one of the unique actually in the world. It was the largest series at that time on superior mesenteric vein thrombosis, which is, you know, is congenital. So in Kuwait, because of the intermarriage or because of the young age, you had a lot of them. So we had one of the largest series in the world. And I want to do the analysis. And then I waited two weeks in front of the door of the statistician. Just let to let do the statistics because I was really keen to do that. And then I took my data with me to Sweden. And then I wrote the paper and I sent it to European Journal of Vascular Surgery, one of the top journals now. If you go to the impact factor, more than six, seven, I think. And the reviewer was so kind to me. They told me, I mean, you have a small data, a group of 11 and a group of seven. I, I remember these are almost the numbers. And why do you use chi square? It's completely wrong. And I said, what is this? I've been waiting all this time or writing and then it's wrong, my God. <laughs> then I went and read about it. And in the principles, if you have any cell, I mean, I don't want to go to statistics, but if you have any group or anything, which is actually either less than five expected value or the number is less than 20, you use another method called non-parametric methods. And I said, my God. All, and then I went and did the analysis myself and the paper was accepted. And I said, no, I will never now depend on a statistician unless really I need them. So I, I decided to learn statistics. It took me two years to do that, but it made a lot of difference. And believe me, after all those two years, I wish that someone would have told me that it's so simple that you, I didn't need to do that. And I like to simplify that for the students. The statistics is very simple if you understand it. But if you don't understand it, it becomes like a, a nightmare. And you have an advantage that we didn't have. Believe me before, if I want to do a chi-square, I used to have a calculator and start doing. Of course, it makes you understand more. But now, you don't need to do that. But the understanding of uh, statistics is so important. And I advise them, actually, the students. There is a book, which is maybe they can get it from Amazon, it's an excellent book called Understanding Biostatistics. Uh, it was published by Mosby in 1998, maybe. I've never seen such a book that describes statistics like a story. So I love reading it and even using it in teaching. And that's why I keep two copies of it. This tells you statistics is like a story. And this is what I want from you. The first thing you do once you analyze Arif is to understand the data. You can get surprised. Did, People sometimes don't understand the data. One of the funniest things, I reviewed a master a degree. And then they said to me that the mean gender is 1.5. We know that gender is not actually a number. It is, it's a category. category. Male or female, you cannot take an average. And this master student, he said the mean gender, the mean sex is 1.5 because males work like females and the computer gives you number one, number two, you add them and divide them by two. So what does that tell you? First thing, understand the data. Data can be categories. You cannot give a, a space between them, like the color of the eye. Yeah. Brown, red, yellow. Or gender. Or yeah. nationality. Gender, yeah. yes, but yeah. it's by binomial, yeah. which makes a difference. I'll, I'll yeah. speak about the binomial. But nationality. Whatever national, there is no, you cannot separate them by numbers. It's yeah. just you give them a category, categorical yeah. number. You yeah. cannot use them as numbers, as real numbers. Now, a specific one of them is called binary data, which means two, two variables. Yeah. And this, of course, gives you a, 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 a something which is unique. What is that? If you say I have two categories, like dead or alive, there is nothing between dead and alive. Yeah. And then you know that you can say either this or not this. 
and then you can say if it happens it's one if it doesn't happen it's zero and then you can use this for logistic regression analysis it's a specific type of categorical data for two and then you can say either yes or no, no. Yeah. the other type i can say it's like a categorical data but then you can use it as ranks what do you mean by that if you make a questionnaire and then you say uh, what do you think about this teaching method they said it's very poor poor yeah. it's average it's like a little like it's like a scale yeah. it's a scale yeah, like yeah. so in reality what are you saying that these are like category okay good very good but they are ordered yeah and then order that are ranks they are not numbers you have to understand the, the difference yeah. between ranks and numbers if you have five numbers the real value is the number but the rank is the number of the mid in the middle that is actually the median we call it so you have five ranks although there are five numbers yeah so and then if you say i want the median it is the one in the middle which is whatever number in the middle it's not the average in which you add all numbers and divide over the number now this is very important because if you have ordinal data you can actually analyze it in a specific way all right now there are generally we can say simple analysis we call it univariate analysis or uh, it's an analysis which is simple or more complex modeling the students shouldn't go into modeling it's really needs a statistician to understand it but i continue from my experience as a reviewer 85 to 90 percent of the statistics can be done in simple methods so to do the analysis the first question you should ask yourself is the data continuous or ordinal what do you mean by continuous what do you mean by ordinal i gave you an example for example glasgow comma scale is ordinal injury severity score is ordinal so usually if you speak about continuous data for example you should wait speak about the weight 17 kilograms and 20 250 or blood pressure for example or blood yeah. pressure so yeah. in which actually you can really go and find fine differences now the the, the other thing you should uh, ask yourself of course there's something called integral data what is integral data what's the difference between ordinal data continuous data and integral data if you have you can the number of students is integral data it's actually you can say one two three four five up to one thousand but there is no one and a half students yeah so that's a type if the numbers are too much they behave exactly like continuous data but the number of students actually is not continuous data if you speak about million population okay you have now million one million dots it behaves like continuous data so the first thing you should ask yourself type of the data yeah, yeah. You know, what, what are you using what yeah. type is it continuous and this is one type of data yeah. is it ordinal? ordinal and this is another type of data why because the the there are two major methods of analysis we say parametric non-parametric the parametric it really works with the continuous data mainly yeah all right but this is not the only condition that's the first that's the first thing it should be like a continuous data or similar to it all right yeah uh, like not a large number of, large of people yeah. now the second assumption which is very important now you should ask yourself if my data is continuous is it normal distribution yeah because your analysis to use the parametric always have two assumptions this is like a normal distribution which is it's actually a curve like a bell so the first thing you do, you look to the to the image, to the picture. The, we call it histogram. If yeah. the data is skewed, you have two options. If the data is not normal, you have two options. The first option to change it to normal, we call yeah. it transformation. Yeah. The other option which I do is to use non-parametric data. Yeah. What's the difference between parametric and non-parametric? The non-parametric analyzes the ranks, not the crude numbers. Okay. So that is the second question. If you want to do parametric methods, let's say we very common to use t-test. It's one of the most commonly used uh, statistical methods. It has two assumptions. The first of all, it should be normal distribution. And the second thing, the variance of the two groups should be the same. What do you mean by a variance? You have a graph like this, or you have a graph like this. So the variation within the data, they should be the same. So if you have these, you can do two t-test 
If you don't have the, this, my, the simplest way is to do non-parametric. Now, non-parametric is more stronger than parametric, but that means if there is significance, it should be available in the parametric methods. Yeah. Now, the second the, the question later on you will ask, okay, I will use, is what type of data is this? Okay. And if it's continuous, is it normal? Is it uh, normal what? distributed or not? Yeah. And, and then you ask the third question, how many groups I am going to compare? Yeah. Is it two groups or more than three groups? Yeah. And then depending on that, you can decide which test. But more important also, which people make that mistake, very common, you can ask yourself, are these groups related to each other? Because they should be completely separated from them if you want to do independent analysis. Yeah. And for example, I mean, if you take a blood pressure of a person and then give him medicine and then check his blood pressure, you are not, you are studying the same person. Same person. Yeah. And then we call this is dependent variables. Yeah. So the next question you should ask yourself, is this dependent or, or non-dependent? Non yeah. Because yeah. then it's very easy. There is a small table, you can take it, you can apply it. Application is easy of the computer, but understanding Anything. this is very important. What type of data I have? Is it normal or not normal? Yeah. Are, is it two groups or one than two groups? Are the data related and unrelated? And you can easily do the test very easily. I mean, if it's normal distribution, non-related, use unpaired t-test. If they are in the same subjects, they are related, use paired t-test. Yeah. If they are more than three groups, or three groups or more, use ANOVA. Yeah. Now, if it's non-parametric, the data is not normal distribution. You go and check non-parametric. So let's say if you have, uh, if, uh, uh, if you want uh, to compare two groups, they are not related, you use man whitney hmm. test. Yeah. If they are related, Wilson sign rank test. Yeah. If they are, two, these are two groups. If they are more than two groups and related, yeah. in the same, same group person, you use Friedman test. If they are more than three groups, unrelated, you use cross catalyst test. Yeah. It's as simple as that. But if you understand the principle before you go to the data, what is my variables? Are they uh, one, uh, two groups or three groups I'm going to compare? Or uh, are they actually, uh, actually related or unrelated? Then this is for the variables which are ordinal or continuous. Now, for the categorical data, you can, if it's really, if the numbers are more than 20, each expected cell is more than five, you can use chi-square. If it's limited than that, use features exactest. By this, we covered 90% of the statistics. I wish I had known that before I went to my <laughs> statistician about, because the issue is that, you know, our statisticians are even more precious than doctors. People wait for front door just to give 20, 30 minutes, and then they are so busy because people, and, and by this, at least, like, the, you know, in point of care ultrasound, we <laughs> used your point of care ultrasound, and you just became very happy because they are not coming to them. So I, I really encourage the students to learn something about statistics. Great. It's very I, fun I and one, enjoyable. One, one question to you, Pro. I know you, you always prefer to use the non-parametric test. Actually, uh, I cannot say you're insisting to use it, but your your preference is more likely to use the non-parametric all the time. Uh, is there any you know specific reason for this one, or you just want to be just to yeah, make yeah, sure yeah, if there's yeah, a significant? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, no, no, yeah. no. Actually, it's from experience, Arif, and I, I want to stress this for the points. We always stress about p-value less than 0.05, by the way, you find it in the journals. And this is an arbitrary value, it's a theoretical value. There is no, I mean, in, in, if you speak about chance, there is always a chance to be wrong. And this is we say, we accept the chance to be wrong 5%. But not one, why not 1%? If you speak about harm, speak about harm. It's better to use a p-value of 0.1 because you don't want to, you need a margin. You want yeah. to say, okay, I need a margin that if even if it's 10% probability this is harmful, I don't accept that. Yeah. And I don't want to miss the significance because I use non-parametric methods. Yeah. So, but using this, I intentionally, I know that 
Every time it's positive in non-parametric, it's positive in parametric. No one will come to you and tell you, why did you use man with new you test? No one, because that is stronger. I'm accepting a significance which is higher. I'm asking yeah. a higher standard. So using Fisher's exact test or man with new test or works on sign right test, which are non-parametric, are more demanding. They need more p-values. They, they, need, they need more strength. Yeah. If you take the non-parametric and the conditions apply, mm. they should... There are two conditions I told you. The condition applies should be normal distribution and equal variance. The p-value of the normal distribution will be higher. But the advantage of the non-parametric, it's more strict and it doesn't need a normal distribution and it works with small numbers in which you cannot use. In, in ordinary data, you don't need in a rank. If you, if you use a t-test for a ranks between one, two, three, four, five, it's wrong. You should use non-parametric method. So why not use non-parametric method? My, this is, yeah. I learned from experience. Yeah. I don't think that uh, statisticians may not agree with me, but I like to go always on the safe side. I am still using hard copies, as I told you, for <laughs> backup. I am a guy who really sometimes uses his hand for calculation. We are from the old school, and I think we should stick to that, Arif. And you yeah. are the new generation <laughs> who are carrying this to the, to the future, especially the students. Yeah. Thank you very much, Prof. It was very lovely. Uh, I, I hope this uh, summarizes everything. and. Uh, Maybe I can put the table on your website so they can really see. Yeah, it can be great, actually. We, yeah, can, we can add a, uh, a kind of table yeah. under the video uh, yeah, chat. So, so people can really yeah. know which test to do. And yeah, that would definitely. Be useful. And, I agree. Uh, I, agree. And thank, I, I would thank the statistician for giving me the wrong statistical analysis <laughs> because he, may, he changed my life, actually, in research. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Prof. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Arif.